we've gone through all of this complicated process of bringing our representation of the 3D objects down into two dimensions and then deciding which pixels belong to which triangle or which pixels are inside a triangle and which aren't, which tells us which pixels we need to light up on the screen. Uh, but there's a problem, um, which is called the visibility problem. We want to render two triangles, say, um, triangle A and triangle B. A and B. So using this whole system that we've got before, let's say, uh, oh, let's say in 3D space that triangle A is in front of triangle B. So we go through our process, we transform the vertices into world space, then view space, we project down, we decide which pixels are going to be green, um, and we render them uh, into the frame buffer or onto the screen at the end. Then we do the same for B. Um, we go through the whole process, we collapse it down to 2D, we decide which pixels are um, belonging to B and then we write them to the screen. But the problem is, because B was drawn after A, it overrides the pixels that are already in the buffer on the screen. So this is a problem. How do we go about making sure that our representation of the scene is faithfully recorded when we convert from the representation of triangles to pixels? How do we know which pixels are in front of others? The original and uh, simplest solution to this is just to make sure that we draw our triangles in the correct order, which is called the painterly algorithm. <laughs> um, because you do it like a painter would, you draw the background first, so you render B first, and then you render A over the top of it. And that way, the pixels that we end up with represent the correct depth in the scene. We have the green pixels overriding the ones that we drew originally. The problem is that this isn't very robust. If these two intersected, or if you had three triangles that had more complex overlapping, A is in front of B, but C is in front of A but behind B somehow, then you can't necessarily order them correctly. More generally, what the problem is, is that if you're ordering them on, say, a per triangle or a per object basis, that's not quite enough to say which pixel is in front of which pixel, because the operation needs to happen at the pixel level. So the solution is to record the depth information in a, another buffer. So first of all, when we render A first, remember A is in front of B. When we render A, we record at every pixel the depth information for this triangle. Then when we come to render B, before we write the colour of B, into the frame buffer, what we do is we do a test. We say, is the depth at this pixel closer or further away than the existing depth in the buffer? If it's closer to the eye, then we can safely overwrite because we know that B is in, meant to be in front of A in that case. Um, if it's further away, we know that in that specific case for that pixel, B is meant to be further away and we just throw away the results. So let's say all of these are at one unit out. And then we want to draw another triangle on top. What happens then is that the depth values for the second triangle get sent into this buffer. And here we do a test. We say, is the depth at this pixel, when we're rendering this triangle, is it closer or further away than the depth that's already in the buffer? So let's say these are all at depth um, 0.5, so they'll all be closer. And in fact, then what we would do is override this pixel that belongs to that triangle. That way we can do per pixel depth ordered rendering um, without worrying about having to order the geometry um, and about worrying about, uh, not have to worry about special cases. Um, and that's the solution that is um, used ubiquitously now in any kind of 3D rendering. Not necessarily just because it's useful for solving this problem, um, because the depth buffer, as we'll find out, uh, actually has a lot of other uses, because when you finish drawing your scene, what you have um, is, for every pixel, uh, a depth value that tells you exactly how far away it is from the eye from the point of view of the viewer. 
So what you have is a coarse representation of the scene, which can be used for all kinds of interesting purposes for post-processing effects and for generating shadows. What happens if the scene's got, say, windows in it or something? Right, yes, that's a complicated problem. This is the area where Z-buffering can be problematic because if you want to draw a window or a tra transparent or translucent object and you write its depth into the depth buffer and then you draw another object that's opaque, for example, that needs to be behind the transparent object, it will fail the depth test because it's behind the transparent object. So its depth values um, are further away than the windows. So the solution is simply to draw everything opaque first and then afterwards you turn off the depth buffering or you don't write to the depth buffer and you draw your translucent or transparent materials um, over the top and do blending with what exists already in the frame buffer because that way you won't have problems whereby uh, you look through a window and everything that's behind it isn't there or has disappeared because it's failing the, the depth test. The problem, of course, with that is that because you're not using depth testing to draw translucent or transparent objects, you start to run into the problem of, well, if you're looking through window A at window B, you need to draw them in the right order again. And I think for that um, situation, uh, the only real solution is just to fall back to the painterly algorithm again. Sort all of the transparent objects back to front, draw B first and then A. Um, and in general it works because the majority of scenes uh, com are composed mostly of opaque objects that are amenable to Z testing. And only occasionally will you have a layer of transparency, a window or a um, a, a cloud of fog or something like that that you need to look through and have that rendered using the paint on the algorithm. Very rarely will you have the situations that break down where two windows of different colours intersect and things like that. But there, of course there are ways of handling that special case um, if you really, really need to do that kind of rendering. But in most circumstances um, the paint on the algorithm works fine for that. Now what we've done is taken that simple geometric representation and discretized it. In general, we prefer to download in pieces because it lets you adapt. It means that you can decide that things are great and give people a high quality video, or you can decide that things are not going so well and you could downgrade and try to make the playback smoother.